I, I didn't even notice that before. That even they had the the price of everything. Oh yeah, look at that. Suit. You must have sold. Oh yeah, suit. boots. Boots. <laughs> and then uh, that's cool. Seven dollars is that for uh, mittens? Is that? Yep, mittens. <laughs> and I'm not sure what this would be. Tra that's cool. Trailer. Trailer. He was the last guy that I bought that had it. He, okay. Yeah, he so was, was up by Rice Lake or somewhere else. So there. you're the second owner then. I would be the I third. Think I'm the third. Okay. I think I would have been the third owner of it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So did you check the points and everything? And I did not. Okay. Did not. The only thing when I got when I picked it up from him, I knew that I knew the chain was out and I knew that it did not have spark. Okay. And then when I got home, I checked to see you know if it had power. It had power coming out. But then nothing You're just coming like, out. Okay. Yeah. So again, it sat up here. Well, I first sat by my parents where before I built this, and then it's been sitting up here. Okay. It's just got time. So it's just time to, yeah. But everything's there, and but there, yeah. There's just not that many of them out there. I'm, I'm sure you didn't go through the carb or anything like I that because you couldn't get spark. So why why bother, done, right? I have not done a thing to it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But yeah, having the history of that's kind of cool and stuff, you know. Oh yeah, that's really cool. With the sled. <laughs> this one, I'm not sure if it came stock or not with the winding kit on it. Okay. Or somebody added that. A lot of them, I don't know if you noticed that on a lot of mm -hmm. those sleds that they came with that. Yep. But, so uh, you think just add the chain, get spark, and this thing okay. should fire up? It should fire okay. up. Okay. These things. And you said this this is the right chain for it, you're pretty sure? Yep. Okay. Yep. I actually had this off here. This master is not good. That's probably why it's off. Oh See yeah, it? yep, it's See, cut it's not, off, yep. yeah. See, it's not way through. Okay. So that's probably why it's off, it probably came off. And then he just took it off and, yep, they yeah. took it off and then he was gonna get one. But now I'm gonna second guess myself on what we just talked about. There's a hole here. Would that have been where the tensioner would be? Um, no. I don't know. You know what I mean? Yeah, because usually they have a tensioner, but I don't know. Yeah. So it was last registered in 86, it looks 86, like. 86, probably last up was ran too. Yep. Gas tank's clean, that I know. Okay. Um, the guy cleaned that out or whatever, I didn't. But it was, Did he just drain it out and yeah, then, okay. Yeah, drained it and um, he said he took it off and tipped it, blah, blah, blah. Okay. So that's why everything I miss is all just, you can see it's just brittle. All brittle. Everything's brittle. Okay. Um, I'm, again, guessing, because again, I never did nothing with it. Yep. But it looked solid. Yep. But I don't believe that there's any, okay. you know, any holes or nothing in it. Okay. So, but um, yeah, other than if there was a tensioner on it or not, I guess that part I really, honestly now, if that would come down and then that would bend that. Yeah. It probably makes sense, to okay. be honest with you. Check this thing out. Just got home from buying this thing. I paid $400 for this. This is a 1972 Trail King 340. Last registered in 1986. So it's been out of commission for a very long time. The guy had this in his collection. He said he picked it up, I think it was last year, and he said he could not get spark on this thing. He said he hasn't looked at the points yet, but uh, he was getting power to the engine just not after the coil he tried replacing the coil and he said he still couldn't get spark so we are going to try to fix this thing up today unfortunately on the ride home the windshield cracked and broke and uh, we were on the highway going fast going probably 70 and uh, it just couldn't hold up so it broke and it just makes me feel sick because you're never going to be able to find another windshield like this for this machine because they're so rare so i i'm kicking myself for driving on the highway with it this thing was just in mint condition before um that that broke right there so very unfortunate but the rest of the machine is in very good condition for the year it's all original you can see the seat only has like one little tear right there i mean it's just almost perfect engine really hasn't been touched he took off a coil because just because he was messing with it that's underneath the seat. You can see the carb and everything is there. 
uh, air filter still on there. I mean, it's just really, really nice. And uh, it still has the key, the ignition, everything. So I'm really kicking myself for breaking that windshield. But uh, I guess you live, you learn. There's the model number down here and serial number for it. The track is a little worn, but it should still ride. The drive gears look like they might break off of there. A um, couple of small cracks in there. So hopefully we can still ride it. <laughs> yeah, they look good up here though. You can see they're all intact there. So if we can get this thing to fire up today and get spark, we can take it for a little ride. But uh, that's if we can get spark. It has the, is it Lloyd engine on it? They're also very rare engines. You don't see these very often. I don't know if that's because they're bad or if because there just weren't uh, many made. I'm not too sure. But uh, we'll take a closer look once we get in the warm garage here. So let's get this thing unloaded and uh, start working on it. Still kicking myself about that that windshield there. That is such a bummer. <laughs> Cause this thing is so clean. Look at this thing. So nice. But like I said, what can you do? The deed is already done. So let's take a look underneath the seat here. So this thing came with the brochure. So this was back in 1972 and I don't know if you guys saw in the video before but you can see the price for things uh, this says seats so I think the seats were $80 or a suit maybe the the, the suits you can see in the pictures here um, boots were $22 the trailer was 120 to 180 dollars and then mittens were seven dollars and the total came to 965 you can see you said a cover right there too but you can see the wheel kit down here for it really cool um take a look at the inside you don't get to see these very often so here is the write up on it the exciting 1970 trail kings are available in three basic models um so I wonder what the models were. But you guys can pause and read that if you want. Kind of cool. <laughs> so yeah, just pause any time and read this. So here's the all-terrain vehicle. This was the Trail King. Um, Argo, you got the mini bike, and you've got another mini bike too. Here's the five horsepower, two speed. Let's flip this over. There's the wheel kit, that would be sweet to have. Trailers, and then there's a fold slide and then the apparel. <laughs> so that is, that is really cool to have there. Give me both of these to try. Got the champion plug box here with a different with a bunch of different plugs in here with Bosch plugs. Made in uh, Germany here. Looks like it went through a couple different pull cords. Here's the tool kit. Are these the original tools? I think so. Huh, that says Ford on it, so maybe not. Here are the keys. For the ignition, and then here's the chain, the drive chain. It needs a new master link. But yeah, 
pretty cool. Pretty cool history on it. It fits. Appears to be locked up. Oh, there we go. There we go. Now it's moving. So there's off and on. You can see all the lights are intact here. Like I said before, you got the dual headlight. Those are all perfect. You can see the chrome would polish up. Got the handles right here. A little place for a hitch. <laughs> and even the reflectors on the back are not broken or anything. Has the mud flap right there. Like I said before, the seat's just immaculate. Let's take a look in the tank. You can see you've got the little gauge on the cap. Looks like that is still working. This is a plastic tank, so that's good. Rust in there. Yeah, it's all cleaned out in there. No old fuel, so that's good. He said the lines were pretty brittle, so it just needs some new lines going from the tank to the carb here, but it does have the little bulb in here. So, it looks like it had a place for electric start at one point, so I think you can wire in electric start. Pretty cool. Here's the drive chain from the clutch to the track. And that's where that chain goes underneath the seat. The clutch looks pretty good. And it has a John Deere belt on it. That looks to be in good condition. But yeah, the exhaust is pretty cool on this one. You can see it comes down through the engine with the fins on the exhaust. Comes down and actually goes underneath here and out the back. <laughs> so. Very unique design there. Kind of a weird design. Looks like this might be lights right here. High and low, I'm guessing. But yeah, everything's there. Which is crazy. <laughs> That's so cool. And then here's the engine. He said it had 130 pounds of compression, but we'll check it. Feels like it has quite a bit. Wow. All right. You can see the plugs were running pretty good. Starting to turn brown here at the tip. Looks like they're running champion plugs. Let's see, is this one loose in here too? That's tight. So he said there was no spark on either of them, which is weird to me. And I said to him, it's just odd that both coils would go out at the same time. And he said he even tried a replacement coil and that didn't work either. So he said he doesn't know what the cause of the no spark issue is, but uh, he just could not figure it out. He said he and a buddy, Sat and tried to figure this thing out for a couple hours and just couldn't do it, so he decided to sell it. That plug was running a little bit richer. So this one looks like it was running richer. This one's a little bit more lean. So hopefully we have compression on both. We're gonna see right now. I want a quick spray these down with a little penetrating oil. Just because I don't know if these have been sprayed down yet. At least there's a little bit of lubrication in there now. Impression tests are going in. Going to the right cylinder first. Here we go. Oh yeah. So we're at 150, 60, 70, 175 on that cylinder. Wow, that is good compression. Let's do the left side here. 
Sounds really good when I pull it over. All right, again, we'll do throttle open. Open. One seventy five there, too. So we have plenty of compression. This engine should run great if we can get spark. Okay, you can see one coil's on here already. And the wire's going up to it. He said it had power going to it. I don't know if that's accurate or not. We're gonna test it out. Here's a ground right here, too. We might try to sand that off and see if that might be the culprit. Could just be a ground issue. I'm not 100% sure. Um, let's see if the bolts are in here. This one should be bolted right to here like this. Keep it in place. And then brown goes over here, and then green goes over here. We can also play around with that too. Spark plugs in there. Already tried cutting down the wires, and that wasn't the problem. So, tried a couple different things and just couldn't figure it out. All right, let's see if I can get a good zoom in on here. See if we have anything. We've got a couple different plugs we can try in here. Let's see if any of these spark. I don't think it's the plug though. I'm gonna try to ground this to the actual engine down here. See if we get anything. All right, so we've got no spark at all on either spark plug. What we're gonna do is take this wire right here. This is the positive from the engine going in. We're gonna ground that out to here and we'll see if it sparks here. So hopefully you guys can see if it does. And hopefully I don't get shocked. And it's not really sparking a whole lot. Yeah, it's really not sparking a whole lot. This one, I'll put that one back on. See if the other one sparks. So I'm thinking it probably might be a points problem. We'll see here. Oh, that one sparks. There we go. Once in a while. There we go. Yeah, it's sparking once in a while. I don't know if you guys can see it or not. Let's see if I can do it over here. There we go. Not every time. Huh, not doing it anymore. So I'm thinking it's the points. Let's get that bolt off of there. Yeah, that ground wire doesn't look too good, does it? Clean that up a bit. Let's 
definitely some corrosion and some powder on that. Good. Nothing. Nothing at all. All right. So we're just gonna quick check to make sure that he did, in fact trim those wires and it's not bad. All right, you can see it's trimmed back. Let's see if we got spark in here. Nothing. So we know it's probably not the boot. We're not getting spark in there. Let's see if this one is good. Lots of wire exposed there. So this one has spark. Okay, so still no spark. We'll get these reattached and try one more time, doesn't hurt. So right now I'm suspecting the points. But he said he was getting good power to these wires and doesn't look like that's the case. Nothing yet. Nothing. Check this one. All right, just check these wires one more time for output from the engine. Nothing. This one. Nothing. So, I'm definitely suspecting points at this point. All right. So, I believe the points are gonna be underneath this cover here. So it looks like we have to get this cover off. Luckily, that doesn't look too hard. Hold on underneath here too. Might be. There we go. All right, that came off just like that. Easy peasy. And now you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The nuts were on this side. And these are not permanent nuts, those are nuts that come off, so um, it's easier to install the mechanism, the pull start mechanism, if this cover is off. Otherwise you can't get those nuts in there. So, we can take this off, and then underneath this cover should be the points. We've got the nut there, looks like a washer. All right, and now if we get these two off, I'm thinking we can take these two plates off. All 
Let's see what we got going on. Oh yeah, it is a little access port. Sweet. So now you can see the points. There's a condenser right there, condenser right there. And you can see the points right there. I'll zoom in so you guys can see what they look like. I think they look a little dirty. See that? So, I think we can clean those up. Oh, this one's really dirty in here. Look at that one. Let's get a flashlight. Dirty, look how crusty that is. That is pretty crusty. Take a flashlight and a screwdriver and just kind of open that up and just see. Oh yeah, that thing's caked. I don't know if you guys can see that or not. It's kind of hard to see when I open it. Yeah, she is uh, a little dirty. And the one up here is too. This one's not as bad. But uh, I could definitely use a cleaning. So let's get some sandpaper in there. Clean these out a little bit. It would be easier just to take the flywheel off, which let's see if I can get a puller and pull that off. All right, my puller was not working. So we're just gonna reach in here and clean them, not a big deal. It's not that difficult. So I'm just gonna lift this up and then scrape this off with a screwdriver, these points. They're just gunked up with gunk, you know. It's not anything too serious. A little bit of light surface rust on there and just needs to be scraped up a bit. on one of them. We have spark on one cylinder. We'll work at these points a little bit more. Both are sparking now. So we've got spark. Hee <laughs> hee. What's the points? So now we can get everything back together on here and uh, work on this carb. Obviously, we're gonna have to get some gas line that fits this so we can pump this. But uh, we're getting closer. We have spark and we have compression. Now we just need fuel. All right, taking a look at the carburetor. Here's the vacuum line. <laughs> you can see that's uh, pretty brittle. <laughs> Popped right off of there, oof. Yeah, this carb might be a little rough. Hmm, hmm, <laughs> hmm, That one's spinning right off. Can we get to this one? Oh, there we go. It's a little tricky, but it's doable. All right, let's see. So this is coming slowly. Get the wrench in there. The wrench like barely fits. <laughs> All right. Got it off. Gasket is intact as well, so. Sweet. Now we just have to get this off. Just a little 
bolt. And I should push right through and fall off of there. All right. The carburetor's off. Let's start digging into that. All right, we'll start by getting this off. This gas line. Let's get some of this gunk out. Should pop right out of here like that. There's a little screen filter in there. Let's see if that's clogged. A little bit of it looks like gasket maker or something on there. So that goes right there. So that looks pretty clean. Now we have to be very careful not to rip these gaskets because I don't know if they make kits for these anymore. extra careful and you really want to make sure when you take this thing apart you document what goes where because a lot of times there aren't any diagrams online for this so if you mess it up you're kind of out of luck <laughs> I think he did uh, have this thing with the gas out of it when he stored it. So that one goes on there first, like that. I'm not going to even touch that diaphragm. I wonder if I just, sh I wonder if I should just leave it. I mean, that's really clean in there. I might want to. I don't want to rip a gasket, that's the thing. Ooh, hee hee hee. Okay, did I rip it? I can't tell if I did or not. I probably should just leave it. So it doesn't look like it went through on the diaphragm, so that's good. So this is the main diaphragm. So this was going this way like that. So let's see if we can get that one up. Oh man. <laughs> that's going to be tough not to rip. We really have to see underneath there. Pretty stuck down. All right, that side's up. It's pretty brittle. We'll wet that down and see if we can get it to work here, but. Yeah, it's pretty brittle here. Let's see if that needle is going down. I think that needle was stuck in there. The spring. 
the needle should pop out. Yeah, you can see that was stuck in there. So you went to the getting gas. There we go. Yeah, that's super clean. So everything looks really good on this carb. Must have uh, stored it without gas in it. But needle's still rubbery too. That's really lucky. But we'll spray that out with some carb clean and we're gonna put a little gasket maker around here just because you can see a little piece of the gasket came up. Um, you can see right here it ripped a little bit off of there, but it didn't rip the actual diaphragm part. So we might get lucky. I'll probably order up a kit anyway, if we can find one, just to make sure everything is clean. But we're gonna blow this out with the air compressor and um, some brake cleaner and get that all cleaned up. Everything looked pretty good though. All right, we got the carburetor back on. Let's hook up this vacuum line here. Huh. It's pretty dry rotted, but we're just gonna try to heat that up with a heat gun. I don't think I have the right size line for that. Let's see if we can get it to go on here. It's pretty brittle. I don't have the right diameter line. Oh man, I don't think that's gonna work. All right, this line's pretty close in diameter. It's not perfect, so hopefully it's still gonna work. We'll heat that up and try to expand that a little bit to fit over that nipple. <laughs> okay, I might have done a little too much. Yeah, that's on there. All right, that's good. Now the gas line we have to hook up. All right, we got the gas line hooked up. It's a little thicker diameter line than uh, what I wanted to use, but we'll see if that works. Um, and then we got a clear line down here so we can see if it's pumping gas. So, oh, that's, I think that's broken too. Crap. <laughs> All right, we robbed the gas line off my boat gas tank, so that should work. We've got the arrow going in the correct direction here, going up into the carb. So let's add some premix and see if it pumps into there. All right, we mixed up a little 40 to one. Let's see if this gas tank has a leak. Hopefully not. Here. I can hear it going to the tank. business. There we go. Now it's hard. All right, will this thing fire up? Squirt of gas going in there.
All right, she fired up. It looks like the carb is just flooding out now. It's just pooling gas into the carb. I think that needle stuck. But uh, yeah, it sounded really good. It's running on its own too, so that is awesome. Yeah, it was just flooding out. So every time you pump the bulb, it just floods out the carb. So either that needle is not closing or uh, those gaskets aren't working in there. So you can see the headlights working too. If we get that carb figured out, I think this thing's gonna be a good runner. So, we're gonna have to tinker with that a little bit more. I think it flooded, flooded out again. But uh, kind of idling. It's pulling fuel. It's definitely pulling fuel. It's just flooding out too much. So it's pulling too much fuel. Believe it or not. That's surprising to me. Yeah, you can see the fuel's just pouring in when I pump the primer here. So yeah, it's getting a lot of fuel. Wanna see in there. It should not be pouring in. See that? Just pouring in fuel. But uh, we're definitely close.
look who decided to join the party. Vinny, Master Mechanic. Vinny, what do you think? He's really liking this one. I already got it running without you, buddy. I don't need your help anymore. Unless you want to go for a ride. He's late to the party here. <laughs> He's still checking it out, though. Hop up there, Vin. See if you like the seat. You can hop up there if you want. You can go up there. Yeah, there you go. <sighs> yeah, I think he likes this one. <laughs> well, this thing's running pretty good. We got it to idle somewhat. So I'm thinking the carb just needs a rebuild and uh, that's gonna be good to go. So let's investigate the drive chain and see what we need for that. So if we can get this drive chain installed, we can ride this thing. All right, so sprockets are here. Those feel good. Let's see if this one feels good, yep. I believe there's supposed to be a tensioner right here. If anyone had one of these in the past, let me know. Well, the master link on this one, like, broke off. You can see one of the little tabs broke off. I'm not sure how that happens on this, but it did. Let's just see if this chain's gonna fit first. Are we gonna be a link short here? Found a new master in my parts bin. We're gonna try to put this chain on like a bike. Or you just put it on here first and then uh, move it so that it goes over the sprocket here. Got that cotter pin out. Took a punch and just punched that out. Right. Collar in there. All right. Here's what we're gonna do now. Put this on the lower sprocket, and then see if we can put this on here. Get this to go on to the drive shaft here. here. Alright, I think we got her. Get this nut back on. Feels pretty tight. I'm thinking there's a, I'm thinking there's supposed to be a tensioner either going this way or this way. I'm not sure. You can see there's some flex here. Huh. I think that's broken down here. Let's see here. Oh man. Looks like the uh, the case is all busted out behind here. <laughs> that sucks. 
So behind here, it looks like there was supposed to be like a bearing or something in there. And it's just ripped apart. I wish I could show you guys better. Let's see if I can zoom in. It's hard to see. But it's just ripped apart back there. We need a special puller to get this uh, sprocket off. But Vinny knew that that was the problem. He was sniffing around there. You can see him sniffing the camera now too. He knew something was up with it. Master mechanic Vin always knows, right buddy? All right, this sprocket right here takes a special puller to get off. Um, it's the same one for the flywheel that I couldn't get off, so we were not able to get that off, but I looked underneath here and checked this out. <sighs> This is not a good sign. You can see there's a bearing race right there. And that's supposed to be a bearing. But uh, yeah, that's non existent. <laughs> see if I can fit my fingers behind here and kind of feel. Yeah, it's all hollowed out right there. So that's no good. So we're going to try to find a puller for this thing, check that out and see if it can be fixed. Um, if not, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Either weld it up and uh, remachine it, or I don't know, but uh, I'm guessing that's why the guy left to sit after 40 years. <laughs> that would make sense. So we're going to have to end the video there until we can get a puller for this thing and uh, figure that out. So, that is a bummer. Um, I thought for sure we'd just fix up the carb and we'd be able to ride this thing, but it looks like it's gonna take a little more work. We can never get that lucky. Um, so next video, we will get a carburetor rebuild, get that working properly, um, get the puller tool for this thing, investigate the bearing, and um, hopefully repair this thing and take it for the first ride. But uh, at least we got the fire up. We figured out the no spark problem, which was good. Um, ended up just being the points. So at least we figured out one problem. On to the next. So thanks for watching, guys. Thanks for subscribing. Stay tuned for next video. And until next time, we are out.